On this episode of Extraordinary Women TV... Joining me in the studio today is Anne Sado, president of George Brown College, one of Toronto's most important education institutions. She's also the chair of Polytechnics Canada, sits on several boards, and has received many honors and distinctions, including one of the highest civilian awards, the Order of Canada. And welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's so nice to have you here. And you look so beautiful in this vibrant violet color. Well, I dressed to match the set, it seems, although I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> no, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Now, uh, as uh, the president of George Brown College, you were one of very few women running um, major educational institutions here in Ontario. Um, so that puts you in a pretty good place. Well, I think it's pretty exciting. In fact, I'm very proud to say that of the colleges, and there are 24 in Ontario, six are currently run by women, so 25%. So we're doing well, although that's been the fact for a number of years now, and we haven't seemingly been able to break through that. And uh, at the university level, I think they're maybe a little bit lower than that, but um, I think it's a wonderful place for a woman to be. And I'm certainly proud to be leading George Brown College. Well, that's fa fabulous. So George Brown College is uh, a college near and dear to many, the hearts of many people in Toronto. Well, what makes I, it so I special? Like, well, I like to think it is. And uh, we often describe ourselves as being woven into the social, cultural, and economic fabric of the city of Toronto. Mm -hmm. So we are in the heart of, uh, of the city, right downtown. And uh, we serve a really diverse uh, student body uh, from all parts of the city and from all demographics, people who are upgrading their education. So we have a lot of uh, pathways for students to pursue post-secondary education that they might not otherwise have. And we also have almost 25% of our students now have university, um, either some university education or a university credential and they come to us, to colleges, for the applied education opportunities that lead to careers. So we're very proud of that and the vibrancy we bring to the city and the vital role that we play in providing the labor force uh, that the city needs to work. And of course the programs, um, I know of a number of young women who've gone through the fashion design programs. Yeah, we have uh, our um, uh, programs include hospitality and culinary arts, and we're one of the top uh, 10 schools in North America in culinary. A lot of very well-known chefs have graduated from our programs. We have programs in arts and design that run from fashion, jewelry, uh, to uh, design, uh, game uh, design, as well as digital media. We have nursing, um, health sciences, and uh, community services, a whole range of programs that really work with so many agencies in the city. And then we also have a very strong program in construction and engineering technology. So about 130 programs, 25,000 full-time students, and we have uh, 60,000 continuing education students who come to us for general interest courses or to pursue certificates in a wide range of fields. Now your background is, is primarily business administration. But you, you began your career as an engineer, uh, and you were one of four women uh, in the engineering program in the 70s, and it was in Toronto, it was U of T, was it not? University of Toronto, I was right. one of four in my class. There was right. a few others uh, in different disciplines. Okay. I studied yeah. industrial engineering. Uh, so I was uh, I certainly very used to working in a, or studying working in a male-dominated environment. And then when I graduated and uh, took a job at Bell Canada, I was working in an engineering field, and again, I was working, I think, well, just about exclusively with men. Uh, so the engineering background was wonderful. I happened to love maths uh, and science, so it was well aligned with my interests, and uh, I just felt it gave me uh, a world of, uh, of opportunities, and it really did. Uh, in fact, to the extent that I recommended both my sons study engineering, and they did. What has been the biggest obstacle that you've, you've really had to overcome uh, in your career to date? What would you say is the toughest thing you've had to face? My biggest obstacle? Well, um, I will say that I was the first in my family to pursue a post-secondary education. Um, my parents uh, were both displaced by the Second World War in Europe and they didn't have a chance to complete their education, emigrated to Canada uh, a number of years after the war. 
Um, so, you know, we didn't have it. We still serve, uh, actually, at George Brown, a lot of first-generation students, and these are students whose families never had an opportunity to pursue post-secondary. So you didn't have that family role model and that, uh, and that support. My parents were hugely supportive and really wanted to make sure their children uh, did uh, pursue any opportunity that was available to them. But I feel proud of uh, the fact that, um, that I did complete my studies and then I did work in a very male-dominated environment uh, for my first uh, many, many years at Bell until I got into a more broader administration roles. Uh, so again, I'm proud of the, uh, the work that I did, how I was accepted. I think it was because of the relationships I built. Uh, but fundamentally, it, I did well. I, I produced um, uh, results and I was always willing to take a risk. So if someone offered me a challenge, I was always willing to take it. And I overcame the obstacles that often came with that and was able to uh, produce uh, positive and successful results. And I think that led to, uh, um, to success. Then when I started at the college, uh, I had been 25 years at Bell, so I knew everyone. I knew how things worked. I knew who to call. And all of a sudden, I was in an environment where I didn't know anyone. I didn't know who to call. And uh, you didn't know who to turn to. Um, and I remember one of my colleagues, um, who was then a president of another institution, called me one day and he said, you know, it's going to be hard and you're not going to know who to call. But I just want to sort of let you know that if you're interested in just having a sounding board and will be totally confidential, uh, feel free to, uh, to call me. I did avail myself of that a couple of times, but I think to uh, overcome the transition and the challenges that went from one industry, which was a for-profit, to a not-for-profit, and understand the culture and the change in how things were done and to be successful, I think, uh, was a, a challenge that I did overcome. And risk taking is uh, something that's really key for, for all of us, isn't it, to, to get where we want to go in our careers or our lives. I mean, we do have to take some element of risk. That's right. If you don't step out of your comfort mm. zone, uh, sometimes you don't realize your full potential. And uh, s taking a risk actually allows you to grow as an individual and, you know, as a professional. Uh, so I think it's always, I always encourage people uh, to take those risks because that's how you can also differentiate yourself uh, from amongst others. With everything you've done in your career, uh, all the awards that you've won, uh, all your accomplishments, I mean, what are you most proud of? Um, I'm proud of my family, um, quite frankly, sort of despite all those accomplishments. I have two sons, uh, you know, they, they seem well-rounded and well on their way, so family is very important to me because we have a very small family here. And I'm proud of the fact that I've been able to uh, balance things, and everyone has to define balance on their own terms, but I had great support from my mom who helped me with the kids when they were growing up, a very supportive spouse uh, uh, who's made uh, choices to help me in my career. And uh, so I think of, you know, sort of that whole body of work that includes my ability to have been successful in my career, my ability to have uh, a strong family and, uh, and friends, and, uh, and also that I've been able to give back to the community. So I think it's all of those things. It's a little bit of a package and that I've been able to, uh, to manage it all because all of them are important to me in different ways. And now, the Good to Know Minute. <laughs> no, we're going to go for it. Okay. <laughs> now, Anne, it's time for my Good to Know Minute, and I know you've got a great success tip. Well, my success tip, uh, at the end of the day, it's all about relationships. Um, uh, in order to be successful, you have to do things well, and you have to remember that you won't do them alone. So you have to rely on people to work with you, be that the people you work with, the ones who work for you, or the ones that, uh, that you work for. So focus on those uh, relationships, make sure they're authentic, and that, uh, in the end, will help you be successful. And that's good to know. Thanks <laughs> for that. And I've really uh, enjoyed this time with you. Thank you for being here and sharing your story, and I wish you all the best. Thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me for this second season of Extraordinary Women TV. We hope you've taken something away from these incredible women, and we already have a great line of guests for this next season. I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for watching. If you would like to be a guest on Extraordinary Women TV, Visit our website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Shannon underscore Skinner or on Facebook at Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. 
Join us next time for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV.